All right, everybody. Hey, welcome back, class. What's going on? Uh, I'm, we're almost, almost out of the atomic level. We're almost there. We've got a few things to talk about in this video, uh, but I got to be forthright with you. It's a little heady. It's not quite straightforward, but we're going to get through it together. I promise I'm going to take it slow and easy. And if you have any questions, of course, reach out to me. I'll be happy to help out in any way that I can. Um, we are going to now talk about some of the properties of materials now that we've talked about the properties of atoms. But before we do that, we need to have a brief segue to have a bit of a conversation about what energy is. So we should probably get this out here right now. Energy is literally everything. Everything that you see, hear, smell, feel, the entire universe, and everything that you can't even perceive, that's what energy is. Um, if you look at mass and matter, you might think, that's not quite energy, but it actually is. It's just unliberated energy. Um, energy in the forms that you know as heat, sound, light, is energy that's free to move and express itself that that's confined or combined into something is matter or mass so we're going to start that off by having a little bit of an understanding of what energy is and kind of defining it in our in terms of what physics of what energy is to physics energy is the ability to do work I want you to kind of have that in the front of your mind as we start talking about some of these processes I think it might help also, we have to have an obligatory conversation about the laws of thermodynamics. This is in physics. We're going to get we're not going to get too crazy into it, but you should know that one of the main statutes is this. Um, Julius Robert in 1842 uh, deduced that matter is neither created nor destroyed. We also know that matter equals energy. So the first law of thermodynamics is energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's only transmuted or moved, shifted, replaced. So that out of the way, let's get into something that's a little less crazy. Let's talk about conductors. We're now talking about materials. In the terms of physics, to conduct means to move something. And then, of course, we just prefaced by talking about energy. So a conductor is something that facilitates movement. In our cases here, we're talking about energy. Um, in terms of electricity specifically, a conductor is a material that easily allows the passage of energy or electricity. So that would be Leet, leet. <laughs> heat, light, sound, electrons, right? That kind of movement, all right? So what exactly is a conducting material or a conductor? Well, typically they're metals, right? They're alloys. And the reason that metals are such good conductors is we talked about that valence shell, that outer shell where the highest, um, most energetic electrons spin around. Well that shell is typically more open. It's got more spots available than it's filled up with electrons. And therefore, electrons can easily zip in the atom and just as easily zip out. And that's what conductors really are. They're um, specifically elements and atoms that do not hold tightly onto their outer electrons. They, they accept electrons freely and they give them away just as easily. Um, some people in the physics world like to call them bad parents because they can't hold onto their kids. So that is an understanding of what a conductor is. On the converse, we have another type of material that does the exact opposite and that's called an insulator. Um, insulators are typically like rubber, glass, uh, some types of oil, and you know, we, we have rubber sold bottom shoes, right? Um, these are atoms where their valence shell is typically filled up with electrons, so they don't allow the passage of a lot of electrons, and furthermore, they really hold on to those electrons. They don't let them, let them go very easily. It takes a lot of force. It takes a lot of energy to cause movement within that shell. So an insulator resists the movement of charge carriers and the flow of electricity, and thus that makes it a poor conductor of electricity. It takes a lot of energy in order to get a electron or heat or light or sound to move through an insulator. Right? That's why we have insulating cups. They don't allow heat to transfer very easily. Um, 
should probably throw in a caveat because we always have caveats. Um, extreme stressors, we'll call them pressure, heat, they can change the characteristics of almost any material, right? So um, if you put something through extreme heat and it's like no longer in its fundamental um, state of matter, which would be like gas, liquid, solid, if that happens, then the rules kind of go out the window. Um, another opposite end of the extreme stressor is when they're really, really cold. At that point, most things become superconductors and they let electrons go like crazy. We're not talking about that. I just wanted to give you some context. So let's go back. Um, conductors really easily allow these electrons to zoom in and out, you know, pretty free. They go at their own will. Um, and then insulators hold on to their electrons very tightly. Whereas metallics and alloys, they don't hold on to their electrons very well. They are great conductors. I hope that clears it up. Uh, let's move on to static electricity. I'm on a roll. Let's do it. I'm going to try and keep this under 15 minutes. We'll see how this goes. So what's static electricity? We know that some materials hold on to their electrons and they allow, um, they disallow the transfer of electrons. Some don't hold on to their electrons and they, they let energy flow freely. Static electricity is like the accumulation of electrons um, and they're sitting on like an insulated surface. An insulated surface, as we talked about, doesn't really allow the electrons to move freely. So some process, typically it's like a mechanical process, like when you scuff your socks against your carpet, it sheds electrons from one material and they sit on your super insulated nylon carpet and the electrons just kind of float there. Electrons are always moving, but they're not moving freely. Um, and static electricity really is an imbalance. We've ionized the material um, so that it's a negative ion. It's really heavy in electrons and it's just waiting, looking for some kind of, um, some kind of balance, some kind of rectifying factor. We call static electricity stationary charge. Even though the electrons are moving, they're set in their insulator and they don't move beyond that material. So you'll sometimes hear that. And then what happens when you're walking across the carpet and you're basically walking on a pool of electrons that are just ready to get out. They're ready to be liberated. And then you go and you reach for that metal doorknob. And then suddenly you become a conduit, the metal, is um, really uh, uh, electron hungry and it's got plenty of open spaces for these electrons and then as soon as you reach out to touch that metal then all of a sudden the electrons see a path to find some balance and they come zipping up through your body out through your arm up to your fingertips and right before you touch the doorknob in really dry like cool air then all of a sudden you get that shock and that's the electrons zipping out of your fingers, trying to find a balance on a metal or a conductor of some kind. All right, so in the scenario we just talked about where the electrons are moving through you, your body as the conduit, and they're trying to find that equilibrium, we call that electron flow, right? That's the exact opposite. We're talking about in one hand, we have static electricity, and now the electrons are moving. It's dynamic. There's some there's some movement um, and liberated energy to it. Uh, that's the difference between potential energy, the electrons are just sitting on the carpet, waiting to move, and then kinetic, they're actually going, right? So boom, we go from static electricity, potential, and then now the electrons are zipping through whatever path that they have, and that's the electron flow. But I'm gonna bend your minds just a little bit. You're gonna have to think about this for a second. This is where it starts to get a little weird. So we've been talking in terms of electricity and, and energy as electrons, right? These negative particles moving from one space to another to kind of find balance, right? And what, what's really happening is electrons are finding kind of a hole in these orbits, specifically the valence shells, where they can like zip to the next atom and then to the next atom and then to the next atom. And then when we put them in like a, a powered circuit, which we'll talk about in a second, they're pushed, right? They're pushed through these holes, these spaces that they can fit. But I want you to kind of flip your mind, and this is where it gets a little crazy here. Just as 
electrons are moving in one direction, remember how I used the term charge carrier? Well, something weird is happening. You can consider the spaces for electrons or positive charges, positive charge carriers moving in the exact opposite direction. It's, it's kind of weird, right? Like we know that electrons move forward and that's what carries electrical potential and turns into kinetic energy. But as the negative items, the negative components are moving along the line in one direction, positive items are moving in equal force, equal speed, the exact opposite direction. And when we start to talk about things in terms of um, electronics and, and making circuit boards, which we'll do this semester in this term, we don't really look at the electron movement, even though it's simple to do so and it makes a lot of sense. What we actually look at is that term charge carrier. We look at positive charge carriers moving in the opposite direction. And we're going to go about go around this a little bit more um, later on, but I want you to think about that for a second. As the negative charge carriers, electrons are moving, the allowance for the negative charge carriers are positive, and they're moving the exact opposite direction. And they're just going until they create a balance. I want you to think about that for a second, because it's really what all electron flow is about is about creating a balance. So as negative charge carriers are moving in one direction, positive charge carriers are moving in the other direction. When we talk about circuits and circuitry and almost any electrical engineering classes you may take, we're going to be looking at it from the perspective of the positive charge carrier, not the negative electrons. It's really weird. The book kind of goes into a little bit, um, but in order to satisfy the questions that might have rose in that section, I wanted to talk about it here. So when we look at a battery, right, you're familiar with like a standard AA battery. It's got a little nipple on one side and a flat side on the bottom. Well, the nipple represents the positive side of the battery and the flat side represents the negative side of the battery. If you were to put it in a system of some kind where there was a light attached, you know, we could just as easily say that the electrons are moving from one side of the battery to find balance in the other side. If they were on the bottom, the flat side, they were moving towards the nipple, going through the light, lighting it up. But when we're talking about electronic systems, we really think about it in terms of the positive charge carrier as leaving the nipple, going through the light, and then finding balance on the back end of the battery. I just want you to think about it. We're going to take a pause on this video and we'll go into a next video because I don't want these to be too long. All right, I'll see you there.